using the distributive property with equations lesson 7.3a. The distributive property can be useful in solving equations. My regular subscribers are familiar with this card. The distributive property is like a mother bird feeding each baby in a nest, in a parentheses nest. So we would distribute the 2 to the 4 and multiply it and get an 8. We distribute the 2 to the 6, multiply it and get a 12. And we have a plus sign here. We add them together and get a 20. Same thing if we had variables. We would have 2 times 4x, which is equal to 8x. And we would add it to 2 times 6x, which would be 12x. We add them together, we get 20x. In this one, we have the variable term to x next to the parentheses. This means we multiply 2x to each term within the parentheses. We distribute it. 2x times 4 is 8x, and 2x times 6 is 12x. We have an addition sign. We know it's equal to 20x. And it's actually the same as multiplying 2x times 10. 4 plus 6 is 10, which is 20x. So here it's telling us to solve the equation for x. We have 5 times x minus 6 plus 3, and it's equal to 2x. We need to figure out what the value of x is. First thing we do is distribute the 5 to the x and to the negative 6. Remember, the sign goes with the number. So we have 5x, and 5 times a negative 6 is negative 30. Now we're going to add this constant 3, and it's equal to 2x. We combine like terms. We have a negative 30 plus a 3. We combine them and get a negative 27. If we have negative 30 and we add 3 to it, it's going to bring us back up to a negative 27. So now we have 5x minus 27 is equal to 2x. We need to isolate x to one side of the equal sign. So we can subtract 5x from each side. That's going to create a zero pair here. We have a positive 5x minus 5x, and that eliminates it. Now we just have a minus 27 here. On this side, if we have 2x and take away 5x, that's going to give us a negative 3x. Now we have negative 27 is equal to negative 3x. We divide each side of the equal sign by the coefficient negative 3. This is multiplication, negative 3 times some number x. So our inverse operation is division. We divide both sides by this coefficient negative 3. We have a negative 27 divided by a negative 3. We have two negatives. That's going to make a positive. So the left side is 9. Negative 3 over negative 3 is a 1. Same numerator and denominator. So we have 1x. We know x is equal to 9. Here it's telling us to solve for x again. We're going to distribute this 3 to the x and to the minus 4. That gives us 3x. 3 times a negative 4 is a negative 12, so we have 3x minus 12. We drop down this constant plus 2, and it's equal to 4 plus x. We combine the like terms. We've got, on the left side of the equation, a negative 12 plus 2, which is going to bring us back up to a negative 10. Now we have 3x minus 10 is equal to 4 plus x. We can subtract x from each side of the equal sign. If we have 3x and we take away 1x, remember there's like an invisible 1 here, that's going to leave us with 2x minus 10. And on this side, if we take away an x, we have plus x minus x. That creates a zero pair, and we only have 4 on this side. Now we can add 10 to each side of the equal sign. Since this says minus 10, we can do a plus 10. That's going to create a zero pair here and eliminate it and we're left with 2x is equal to 14. 4 plus 10 is 14. Now we divide both sides by the coefficient 2. It's on this side, and 2 over 2 is 1, same numerator and denominator, so we have 1x, and 14 divided by 2 is 7. We know x is equal to 7. Now we're going to solve for the variable n. We have 8 minus 4n is equal to negative 3 times n plus 1 plus 5. 
first thing we do is we distribute this negative 3. We're going to ignore this for now. We have negative 3 times n, which gives us a negative 3n, and we have negative 3 times a positive 1. We have a negative and a positive we're multiplying, so that's going to give us a negative. We have negative 3 plus 5 on the right side. So our entire equation is 8 minus 4n is equal to negative 3n minus 3 plus 5. We combine the like terms. On this side, we've got a negative 3 plus 5. We can add these together. They are not variable terms. And negative 3 plus 5 brings us up to a positive 2. Now we have 8 minus 4n is equal to negative 3n plus 2. We can add 4n to both sides to eliminate this. We have a negative 4n, so we're going to add 4n to make a zero pair. And we remove it. When we add 4n to this side, we have a negative 3n plus 4n. Well, that's going to bring us up to a positive 1n. Remember, there's an invisible 1 there. We just usually don't write it. So now we just have n plus 2 on this side. We have 8 is equal to n plus 2. Now we can get rid of this 2. If it's a plus 2, we do minus 2 on each side. That's going to create a zero pair here to eliminate it. We remove it. And 8 minus 2 is 6. We have 6 is equal to n. So remember, each lone variable has an invisible 1 as its coefficient. If you see x all by itself, it's equal to 1x. If we see m all by itself, it's equal to 1m. We just don't write the 1 in front of it. We know it's 1x. When an operation sign is next to parentheses, there's an invisible 1 next to the parentheses that can be distributed. Like when we had 9 minus, and then we had 4 minus 3m in parentheses, there's actually an invisible 1 here that we can use to distribute negative 1 times 4 and negative 1 times negative 3m. When we're combining like terms, we combine terms that are like each other, so we would combine variable terms to each other. Then we would combine constant terms to each other. Here we have 2x plus 3x plus 1x. These are all variable terms. We would combine them, and we would get 6x. Here we have constant terms that we can combine together to get a positive 8, a plus 8. Here, we would distribute 2 to 2x and get 4x, then distribute 2 to 3x, to get a 6x, we have a plus sign here, and we would have 4x plus 6x. These are two variable terms we can combine to get a 10x. Now we can isolate x using inverse operations. If we've got 6x plus 8 equals 10x, we can eliminate this positive 6x by adding a negative 6x, creating a zero pair. And on this side, we have 10x minus 6x, that gives us 4x. Now we have 8 is equal to 4x. We can divide both sides by this coefficient 4. That would give us 1x. And 8 divided by 4 is 2. We know x is equal to 2. We're finished with 7.3a. We're moving on to b, using the distributive property on both sides of the equation. Now you should be able to try this on your own and be able to solve for a variable. Have a wonderful day and join me for 7.3b. Bye.